Hey everyone. Welcome. So glad that you are here and uh, hope you had a little bit of a moment of fun with the dance party in the middle of the day. Glad to be with you. I am Pavani More. Um, I'm the founder of Well Celium. We're an online school that supports people who really want the skills to be close, to be intimate, to be connected. And like, who got taught those things? No one got taught those things. Um, so we're teaching those things and um, doing it in a way that's playful and fun and really pragmatic and gets people results. So um, what we are up to today. <clears throat> I don't know if you've noticed uh, in the midst of a pandemic that um, sexuality, like what's that? What is that even, right? Um, so that's what we're here to talk about today is if you are experiencing low libido, low desire, sexual blocks, um, welcome to the club. Uh, we're really talking about what is the practice of free flowing sexuality during COVID times and um, and how you can get it, right? Without um, spending a lot of money or uh, not, you know, not too much effort because we have limited bandwidth and we, we all need to um, just be cognizant of that, so. That's what we're going to do. Um, at the end, there is going to be time for Q&A. So you'll type your questions into uh, into the chat and I'll answer them as, as best I can. I'll give all of my heart to it. Uh, so I encourage you to stay through the whole thing. I also encourage you to turn off any other screens, turn off your phone um, to just really take this time for you to really be present and show up because uh, that's part of how we get to be sexual these days is by making time for it. So go ahead and do that. <clears throat> yeah, so welcome to everyone. Cape Town, whoa, that's far. Um, glad that you're here. So if you have been experiencing any of the, the blocks that I named in your sexuality, welcome, you're not alone, uh, you're not the only one. And there's been actually some research that has been done in the many months of being in a quarantine situation. Um, high stress situations in general and prolonged quarantine impact our, our sexuality, our, um, our availability for pleasure, right? So depression, uh, stress, post-traumatic stress, loneliness, confusion, anger, boredom, frustration, worry, health-related fear, the sudden change in all of our daily lives, our daily routines. We're spending much more time at home, much more time um, probably staring at a screen. We're limited in what we can do personally and what we can do at work. I mean, you know all this, right? I'm not telling you anything you don't know. What I'm really trying to get across here is that, of course, our sexuality is impacted, right? Um, having to adapt to new ways of living, new ways of being, new roles, right? Some of you may have suddenly become a full-time parent um, when before you had you know time for other parts of your life. So all of that stress, right? So the ways that we internalize and externalize stress, the, um, the ways that we might have less access to movement, to exercise, to community, we might be feeling less attractive, um, you know, all that stuff. It, it takes away from our capacity to be present and to enjoy, right? So it can also really impact our motivation and interest in sex. And so the, the jury is out. Some, for some people, uh, the pandemic has increased sexual frequency. And for many people, it's decreased sexual frequency. But across the board, sexual satisfaction is down. Right. So when we're scared in our bodies, right, and we're operating on adrenaline and cortisol, uh, it really lowers the uh, capacity we have for arousability. Um, and it can even induce sexual issues like erectile dysfunction, pelvic pain. Um, the thing about sexual desire is that it unfolds. It's not magic, right? We like to think it's just magic and organic. It's not. It unfolds according to, in response to 
adequate sexual cues. It does not usually arise spontaneously. It does kind of in the beginning of relationships, but as we as we go further into relationships, it doesn't, right? Um, and so the question is not, does stress impact your sexuality? Does quarantine impact it? It's like, what, um, what are you gonna do? How are you going to be with it? So if this is you, if, if I'm speaking to you and you're like, oh yeah, I know. Um, the first thing here is kindness, right? Kindness from me to you, kindness from you to you, because it's okay. It's okay to not be feeling your most sexy and sexually actualized self, right? Um, the impact is real. COVID has impact. And a lot of times what we do is dismiss the impact that we're actually experiencing because we don't want to be experiencing it. We minimize, right? And the, the consequence of this is that we're minimizing our own humanity. We're minimizing our, um, our capacity to be compassionate for our experience. So the first thing I want us all to do is to just take a moment and acknowledge that impact that it's had, right? Non-consensual, we didn't want this, and it's had impact. When we're not acknowledging the full impact of something, we're doing it for a really good reason. And that is to not have to feel the feelings that are associated with that impact. Usually it's grief that we're not wanting to feel. Right? We don't want to feel those feelings of loss because when we feel those feelings of loss, what else do we feel? We feel powerless, right? And um, that's the thing that we hate the most is that feeling of powerlessness. And so if um, kind of, we don't want to feel powerless, so we don't acknowledge the loss. And so we can't acknowledge the full impact. And this seems like a good strategy and it is in, in some ways, right? And when we don't acknowledge what is for ourselves, uh, the impact that we're actually experiencing, we create expectations, right? You're creating expectations for yourself of what your sexuality should be like, how you should be able to feel sexy, feel sexual, feel like you wanna have sex with your partner or partners or yourself, right? So that the expectation of what we should be feeling compared with what we're actually feeling, that gap, right, is really potent. And, um, and so the, the practice here of acknowledging the impact and allowing ourselves to grieve, allowing ourselves to, um, to feel the despair, allowing yourself to be in the powerlessness, surprisingly, it has a counterintuitive uh, effect right? Because the thing about a feeling is that when we're minimizing in one place, right? If we're not wanting to feel the impact of, of whatever, um, it's not like we can selectively mute that part. So when we turn down feeling, when we dampen our experience, we're turning it down across the board, right? And that prohibition to, in this case, grieving, right? It it tamps down the erotic. Right? So we're, <coughs> we're doing it because we think that it's going to help, right? It's gonna help keep us like above, above the line. And it actually um, over time compounds and we're able to feel less, we're able to, uh, we're, we're less able to connect with that part of us that is naturally sexual. Right, then we start to feel like we're broken, and blah blah blah. It goes, it goes on from from there. Um, when we turn it down, we're turning it all down, right? And the the thing about desire is is our um, like when we're in our desire, we're we feel alive. We feel that aliveness, right? And so when we're not willing to feel grief or desire, right, we're not feeling our aliveness. And so if you are feeling stuck or depressed or heavy, like totally, lots of people are right now. Um, and it's not a given, right? This doesn't have to be the way that it goes because you have this magical thing called attention. And 
you get to choose the ways that you place your attention. This is what freedom is all about. What erotic liberation is all about is about you choosing how you attend to the various parts of you and your life. Um, you get to choose to pay attention to the impact and not in a, um, like a heavy woe is me kind of way, just acknowledging like, whoa, what the hell has the last year been, right? Um, and you increase your capacity when you turn your attention again and again and again to what is over time. Yeah, so I, I'm probably not telling you anything that you don't already know, but that's the foundation that, that we're working from is that we start with acknowledging what is. We start with acknowledging the impact. So how to be with it includes that, how to acknowledge the impact, right? And it also includes sharing it with the people who you're close with. So this could be friends, it could be lovers, it could be a partner, um, but the, the vulnerability of talking about, oh my gosh, I feel like my sexuality has, you know, gone to New Jersey um, and I'm scared. I'm scared if it's gonna come back, right? And so a lot of times our impulse, and this is comes from shame, right? Our impulse when we're not feeling at our most sexual, our most sexy selves, I'm not feeling our most attractive or aroused or any of that. Um, our impulse can be to hide that, to not um, just name it, to say this is what's this is what's true for me. This is what's happening, and um, this can happen in sexual partnerships where uh, you stop having sex and you're just not talking about it. it. It's definitely happened to me, right? It's kind of like it becomes this taboo thing. Like we're just going to turn our attention away from that. We're not going to pay attention to that. Um, and so talking about it, naming it can be really helpful. And sometimes in, in just that step of shifting the energy of, okay, we're going to move from not talking about it, pretending it's not happening, being in denial to acknowledging that it's happening and giving it some language, right? If you are alone right now, if you don't have a sexual partner right now, um, it's still important for you to talk about this, right? So you talk about it with whoever you feel comfortable talking about it with, your friends, your therapist, um, whoever is there for you. But to the thing is about um, if we say, well, this isn't available to me, my sexuality isn't available, a sexual partner isn't available right now, so I'm just not gonna want that thing then that doesn't really work because you do want that thing, right? And um, so how can you creatively stay engaged with your desire as you ride the waves of your disappointment? This is a, a pretty next level skill, yeah? So just because you're not going to get that thing, it doesn't make the desire go away. Right. And so you acknowledge that too, right? Of I want this. It's painful to want it and to not have it. I feel really disappointed. I feel um I feel grief. And I acknowledge all of that. That's all true. That all gets to be there. And I still get to have my desire. The I think we all want just an easy way to have our sexuality flowing. Right? We want to feel connected with that. We don't want to effort a lot at it. At least I don't. Um, we want it to be natural and organic and, and spontaneous and just come over us. And like, I feel so alive and juicy and connected with my sexuality. Right. Um, and sometimes this can be true. Sometimes it's just like that. And the that's beautiful when that happens. I, I feel like that's grace when that happens. The rest of the time, how we get to be in that and be connected to that is by giving it our attention, right? So where we put our attention grows, as you know, right? So just think right now of something where you've, um, where you've put your attention, an area in your life or your relationships, you've put your attention on that thing and you've been able to see improvement there. It's changed. Yeah, and go ahead and um, type that into the chat. So 
So where have you been able to see something grow and change as you've put your attention there? Mm -hmm. Relationships with family. Where else? Personal development. Your mood, it's cool. Anybody been able to do it with finances? You put your attention on that and it, and it gets better? Yes. Been able to see an improvement with taking a breath before responding and reacting. Oh, that's always fun when that, when you get to see that, right? So it's the same here of how do we gently place our attention on this part of our experience without a lot of pressure, without a lot of expectation, without a lot of should, because we know that that's doom, right? When we're shooting on ourselves, my sexuality should look like this during a global pandemic. Oh, really? Where do you have that expectation from? Right? So we, we just gently bring our attention to what we want. I want to feel connected with my sexuality, right? Um, one thing that might be helpful to keep in mind is the physical health benefit of uh, sex and pleasure, right? That when you have an orgasm or when you have physical pleasure or emotional pleasure, that it actually is really good for you, right? And so um, if that's something that motivates you, if, if uh, health is something that can create uh, a nice inroad for you to place your attention, there you go. Sex is good for you. Pleasure is good for you. Lowers your, your stress level. Uh, it increases your cardio flexibility, right? Like it does good things for you. Um, you know, we all are in some kind of relationship with what we were socialized into sexually. The upbringing we had around it, uh, our family, our religion, our culture, the place where we live, the relationships that we saw modeled, right? And so there's this invisible thing, system that you're operating inside of that you can't see that limits you. Like you can see how the pandemic limits you. You can observe it, right? Um, you can't hook up with people, for example, or uh, you can only have sex with yourself, for example, right? Um, but this, there's this whole other bubble that is also impact that you're always uh, swimming inside of. It's the water you're swimming inside of, and you can't usually see that. So you can't see all the ways that uh, you don't give yourself permission. You can't see all the ways that um, shame impacts your sexuality and, and makes you feel like, oh, well, it's just, that's just the way it is, right? Um, you can't see how your attractions are socialized. It just feels normal. And I think what has happened in the past year is that we've all had to step out of normal, right? And is this a time to really give yourself permission to not know, to not have to know, right? Like you're here at this webinar because like something is up in your sexuality, something's feeling not flowing. If you didn't have to know the answer, if you could just be in the not knowingness, right? Like, well, I don't know how I'm gonna get myself out of this. I don't know um, what I don't know. I don't even know what I like anymore. I don't know how to find it. I don't know how to get it. Like I know that it can, it can trend towards despair there, but what if the inside somatic space of not knowing felt expansive? So I'm just gonna invite you into that little breath practice of what if the not knowing gives you more permission to be weird, to be adventurous, to be curious, to be playful. Like, I don't know who I am as a sexual being during a pandemic. Cool. Well, I guess I get to find out. The, 
the most um, sustained, impactful change happens in small ways. I was um, I was sitting with some clients this morning and uh, one of them said, yeah, I, I'm totally in a different place than I was in October, but I don't really know how I got here. I just, I can look back and I can say, oh, it's totally different, right? And this is the magic of small practice, small daily reframe practice, small daily mindset work, um, small daily somatic embodiment practice, right? That it doesn't have to be this huge new thing that you step into. Um, it can just be small and subtle and that that actually over time, it's like the tortoise wins the race, right? And often when we see information about how to reclaim your sexuality or how to spice it up, there's this, um, there's this messaging around, I have to do a lot. And um, that can feel overwhelming, right? And it can feel like, ugh, I'm, I'm never gonna get there. Like that's just too far away. And so here the invitation is to trust that your small practices of erotic freedom will get you there over time. Right. If you if you can be in that, I don't have to know. I'm not going to shit on myself. I'm just going to give myself some spaciousness around this. And I'm going to make some time for it. It will shift. Right. The sexual resiliency. Right. You are hopefully practicing resiliency in some way. You're practicing self-care. Um, you're putting attention on it. Like, OK, if I just work all the time, I am going to burn out and ask me how I know. And, um, and then nothing's going to feel fun anymore, right? And so we make space and time for our self-care. We make space and time to consciously practice resiliency. Well, sexual resiliency is part of that, right? So the frame that you might want to hold is that libido, desire, uh, arousal. It's kind of like a tide. It comes in and woo, you're feeling it, right? It goes out and you're like, oh my God, is it ever gonna come back? It comes back and you're like, oh, phew, this is who I really am. Then it goes away and you're like, oh no, right? And, and like, what happens if you widen to hold that whole spectrum of your experience as being sexual? Sometimes I super feel it, sometimes I don't, right? And no matter, you know, just kind of like with your, your self-care practices, sometimes you're feeling like super grounded and awesome and present and on purpose. And sometimes you're not. And you track that there's a spectrum in your mental wellness and that that's okay, right? And then when you start to get wobbly, you just do more practice. You go see your acupuncturist, you go to your therapist, whatever, to get back on track. Same thing with physical wellness. Sexual wellness, same thing, right? It, it means taking deliberate time and space for it. Um, but it doesn't have to be some huge uh, stretch goal. I hope I'm conveying that nuance clearly enough. Um, because I, I do want you to feel like this is accessible to me. It's not something that some people get to have. Everybody gets to have this. It's just about how do I place my attention? How do I allot my attention to this part of my life, right? Which is important. So oh. we talked about acknowledging the impact. We talked about communicating the impact. We've talked now about placement of attention and sexual resilience. Uh, and I wanna talk a little bit about self-exploration. Um, and this could be masturbation, could be self-pleasure, could also just be like, I don't know, so I'm curious, I'm gonna explore here uh, because if, especially if, um, if you're sick of your partner or if you, you're not cohabitating with someone or if you haven't had access to a partner um, or if you just prefer to be alone, where, wherever you are, um, there's no need to stop being sexual, right? There are so many people that I talk with really have a lot of barriers to self-exploration. Um, they get really habituated we all, not they, we, us, uh, we get really habituated in our self-pleasure. Um, we figure out how to be very efficient, right? We just get the job done. Um, and 
oftentimes there's things in the way like guilt and shame and self-judgment, lack of confidence, um, lack of know-how even. Mm -hmm. So I want to remind you that just as partner sex can be a health benefit, so can solo sex. Um, pleasure, enjoyment, relaxation, release, self-care. These are all built in, right? And this is, um, it's available whether or not you have an orgasm, whether or not you even touch your genitals, right? Like self-pleasure can be such a expanded place to hang out, right? What am I doing today to make myself feel good? Right? How am I uh, inviting in enjoyment into my life today? This is a small, like, really small practice. This isn't like, okay, I just went to the sex toy store and spent $500 online, right? It's just like, oh, what do I want to enjoy today? Small practice over time works wonders. Um, you know, if, if masturbation or self sexual exploration isn't your thing, you might consider how do you tend to this part of your sexuality, even in the absence of explicit uh, sex, whatever that means for you, right? Because sexuality and sex are not the same thing, right? So how are you, um, I know everybody's like, I put pants on for this webinar, people, because I was like, this, yeah, it's important, right? How am I dressing to express my sexuality, even just for me, right? How am I um, inviting in the music that I love, the foods that I love? How are you uh, savoring, if you feel like wine, how are you saving, savoring your wine? How are you bringing in the senses, right? To tend to this part of you that even if you're not having sex and you don't want to be having sex and that's just like not right now um, or not ever how are you still continuing to have a sensual relationship with yourself where can you savor what can you enjoy the um and this again doesn't have to be a huge shift to like now i have to do all these things because pavani said so no what are you already doing that's enjoyable and I'm going to um, ask, actually ask you to answer that in the chat. Where is there pleasure in the things that you're already doing that you don't have to change anything up? And so go ahead and type your answer in. <laughs> Making delicious food for myself. Beautiful. What else? Sitting in moments of joy and savoring the feelings that run through my body. Listening to music, creating art, cup of coffee in the morning. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Putting on makeup from time to time. Ambient music, reading going to get my nails done. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And so here is something to do with those, any of those things, right? Of just crank up your attention on the enjoyment, right? So when you sit down to make that delicious meal that you cook for yourself, it's, you bring that intentionality, right? Of like, and now I am going to savor this meal. When you are listening to that music, it's, it's the intention is there to connect with your sensual aliveness, right? Which is how I define the erotic. Um, and so it doesn't even have to be, you know, now I have to do all this stuff to amp up my sexuality. It's like, okay, how do I just add value to the enjoyment and the pleasure that's already there. Um, I love brushing my teeth, right? And when I remember to be present to the experience of brushing my teeth, it it's very pleasurable, right? But a lot of times I'm not very present to it. I'm just like, I'm just getting the job done, right? Kind of like 
our masturbation can be like that too, same, right? So how do I bring my attention? Um, and, and that's for me, at least, and, and for lots of folks who I work with, that connecting through the attention is where it, it can be really beautiful and not be a lot of extra work, right? Um, the stuff, if you are with a partner and, uh, and sex is, um, you're, you know, struggling to create sexual experiences between the two of you. This is also super common. Uh, lots of people I talk to are, are in this boat right now. And so, okay, how are you going to renegotiate for right now? You know, how are you going to show up to a, an erotic connection that might look really different? One of my favorite things to do um, is to show up like, so set a date, set a time, right? Uh, we know that sex works better if we plan it. Um, even though people have a lot of resistance to that idea. So you, you, anyway, let's say you, you don't, and you plan your date, um, and you show up to your date and, um, you can also here be in that not knowing. Well, what do you want to do? Hmm, I don't know. Let me feel into it. What feels alive right now? What's the desire that's moving through me right now? What's the desire that's moving through you right now? Um, well, I think I would like to cuddle up on the bed and, and listen to some sexy erotica with you. Cool, let's do that. Uh, I think I might like to share some massage with you. Are you open to that? Right, so we can expand what erotic connection looks like to, so it's not a pass or fail, right? We're not just like, cool, showed up, check, had sex, check, had orgasm, check, cool, done. Sex is off the list. No, it's, it's showing up and being available for what is sex today with me and what is sex today with you and what is sex today together with us, right? And this means that we, um, we don't get to depend on our habits, we do get to experience novelty then every time, which is a, a key factor to, um, for some people, for their eroticism, right, is novelty. So this really calls into question that spontaneous sex myth that so many people have, right? It's not real. Um, if we plan it, it's not real unless the moment just hits both of us at the same time and it's magical and organic. Like it really calls into question that myth and it makes, um, it makes sex a collaborative project that you're sharing together, right? Um, rather than this mystical, magical thing. My sense of it is having structure gives space for even more magic, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And it also helps us manage our expectations of like what's realistic, right? And it, and it gets us out of that, like, well, we had sex how many times this month? Uh, you know, how many orgasms did I have? Like, we don't have to be in all of that. We just get to, to show up to our weekly sex date or whatever it is, whatever rhythm you decide and be in flow with it. Find sexuality that's alive in that moment with both with both people, or if it's just you with just yourself, right? So that dance and the play of the erotic gets to weave through us. It gets to weave through our lives if we allow it to, right? So we're um, we're going to do a little practice because I want you to walk away from this class today with something that you can do. So um, the practice is called deciding through pleasure practice, and. Um, I'm going to invite you to, this is a standing moving practice. So yes, we're gonna get up out of our Zoom chairs, except me so that I can still talk to you. So go ahead and um, rise up your body. And the point here is to decide through pleasure right? Of just letting pleasure be your guide. And if you imagine, like if you were, um, how I imagine this is walking on a trail with a dog, right? And the dog's like sniffing over here and sniffing over here and sniffing over here and sniffing, sniffing, sniffing. Like your pleasure is the sniffing dog, right? So now that you're up, let your pleasure sniff out 
where your body wants to be in your room that you're in and try on some different options. And so maybe try three steps or three rolls or three scoots to the left and see if there's more pleasure or less, less pleasure. See if movement or stillness sniff out that pleasure. Let your eyes go. Let them see what they want to see. What pleasure can your eyes take in? Let pleasure decide how you're breathing right now. Do you want to breathe more shallowly? Do you want to breathe more deeply, more quickly, more slowly? Let pleasure decide. Let pleasure decide if you want to stay where you are or try somewhere else. Let pleasure decide if you would prefer to face the wall or put your back to the wall. So for this next prompt, I want you to try saying yes out loud and try saying no out loud and see which one feels more pleasurable. And then say that a couple more times. And now just see what would be most pleasurable body? What would be most pleasurable right now? Do I want to continue to stand? Do I want to sit down? Do I want to lay down? And let pleasure move your body. The invitation here is to, in this letting pleasure decide practice, just open to the connection with your sexual self, right? It's like, oh yeah, this is part of me, being a sexual being. And taking one more moment here in this practice, and we'll come back together.
And what did you learn from this practice? Go ahead and type anything that you noticed into the chat. What did you learn? My body really just wanted to rest. Yeah, beautiful. What else? I'm yearning for more yes to outward requests. I don't know if you mean you're yearning to say yes more or to hear yes, but I will just say yes. Yes, yes, yes. Pleasure is always available, even when it's so subtle. Yeah, I, mean, I think that that's the thing, right? We just like, we think, oh, these, if I'm gonna practice my sexuality, it has to be some big, Y'all just took like three minutes to do that. Um, let pleasure decide practice, right? I learned that what I thought I wanted to do for pleasure in my mind was not what my body desired. Well, good job listening to your body, right? This is so, this is so often true. We think we want something and then we get in there and then we're like, oh, actually I want something else, right? Good job giving yourself permission. Wonderful. So just inviting yourself gently into practice spaces, right? Into creating um, times where you're just asking yourself that of like, how can I, how can I enjoy this more? What do I want to enjoy today? Um, the, I know it sounds small, like how could that really have an impact. Like I know I have to, I have to get in there. I have to do all this work if I want to connect with my sexuality and get these sexual blocks out of the way. And I just think about um, if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon. Um, I've I've been there a few times, and every time I go there, I'm astounded, right? Because the Colorado River down at the bottom, it does not look that significant when you're up at the top, right? But over time how the water, the flowing of the water has really changed the course of the landscape so profoundly, right? And what's it to trust your process? What's it to trust that your sexuality is already flowing, right? There are, there might be boulders uh, in the way of it, but that, that the placement of attention on these small practices, when done over time, when done without uh, making it a big effort. I have to now put this on my to-do list, you know, when it's just like, oh yeah, what am I, can I enjoy this a little bit more? Can I make time this weekend to spend with myself without having to know, right? Can I tell my partner how I'm feeling? These little practices uh, have huge, huge uh, effect and, um, it's, it's less the, like we might have like, you know, one or two erotic epiphanies in our life, maybe a few more if you're lucky, but uh, it's these small moments with ourselves that really create that flow, that create it being uh, accessible, right? So a few things I want to share with you. So we're gonna, um, I'm just gonna share a few announcements with you and then we're going to have some Q and A time because I want to make sure that you have time for all of your questions. Um, as maybe you know, we do, Wasilium does um, free teachings the first Thursday of each month. And um, so you can sign up to be made aware of all of those. And I hope that you will come to, to them. The next one um, is 
on when you don't want to, <laughs> like when you want to have sex, but you don't really want to have sex, uh, you know, talking about sexual aversion of like when we don't want to, but we still want to, or we want to, but we don't really want to, we're going to talk about all of that. Um, and then the other announcement that I want to share with you is we have a, a new course coming up starting in March on healthy boundaries. Uh, and it's for, um, for adults who really want to be able to stay in relationships, friendships, love relationships, partnerships, family relationships, who want to be able to stay without having resentments grinded into the ground. Um, and so the Healthy Boundaries course is going to be taught by uh, Lindsay Scarlett Tunkel, who's an amazing facilitator. And that starts March 3rd. And um, I'll send you information about that. It's also on our website. If you're interested to, to know more about that, we'd love to have you for that. So um, those are the two upcoming things, announcements that I wanna share with you. So just, yeah, let's make some time for some questions. Drop in to your body, see what, um, what do you wanna ask about? And I promise to give you my full attention and all my best effort. Okay, so there are some here already. Um, Anthony, uh, I'm not sure your, your question is how to know when you're being taken advantage of. Uh, if you could type a little bit more about that, I'm not sure quite how it relates to our topic, but I'm happy to, to talk about it if I have a little bit more context. Um, why do I have the urge to have sexual relationships with four of my male friends? <laughs> I love this question. Um, well, you're, it sounds like you're attracted to them and um, you, you want to have sexual connections with them. And I think that there's something about um, intimacy, right? That we know with our friends. Uh, I don't know. It's like how you, you get to know somebody and you love them more, right? As you get to know them. And sometimes we get to know people and we find them more and more attractive. I've had that happen for sure with folks, right? And I, um, yeah, just, I wonder if like, what's the flow there for you? You know, what's the block and what's the flow? And is there a way to just have permission for it to, yeah, I've got hot friends, cool. I've got sexy friends, um, good for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, what other questions are there folks? My last therapist told me that having sex makes frustrations go away. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I think it depends on the quality of the sex. Uh, and if, um, if it feels satisfying, right? That there's a way that connecting physically uh, can be really soothing. Uh, there's a way that connecting emotionally can be really soothing. And sometimes we have sex that's that's not soothing, right? Sometimes we have sex, we, you know, we have all kinds of sex, right? Um, and so I wouldn't, I can't make the statement across the board that it makes our frustrations go away. Um, I do think that it helps, you know, when it's, when it's good sex and both people feel good about it and it's consensual, um, that it does help release stress and relieve stress levels. So I hope that's helpful. What else? Other questions do you have? You can ask anything. You got my full attention right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. What if I want to encounter my sexuality in this time of pandemic and I have never had a sexual encounter with a partner? Yeah, well, first I just want to say it's a beautiful desire. Um, and I'm wondering about sexuality with yourself. I don't know what your safety protocols or precautions are, what level of risk um, you're taking. Um, so I'm going to assume that they're strict, um, but I wonder about some self-exploration of, um, and maybe you've, maybe you've done some of that, but I wonder about like some, you know, saying, all right, on Saturday, this Saturday morning from 10 to 11, I'm going to 
touch my body. I'm going to just bring touch to my body and see what feels good, see what I like, um, and just make my body feel really good. And, and if that becomes masturbation or sex, that's fine. And if it doesn't, that's fine too, right? It's just bringing that conscious touch and attention to yourself. Um, I think another, I think there's lots of ways you can explore your sexuality right now too. Um, you know, there's online erotica that you could listen to. There are books that you could read. There you could be chatting and sexting with people, um, which is in a way really sweet because it's safe, right? Um, if you don't like what somebody says, you just stop texting with them. Um, yeah, I wonder if like, all right, how do you engage your creativity? Uh, and how do you explore in a way that feels right to you and, and give yourself permission for that? Thanks for that great question. What else? Any other questions that folks are having? Earlier in the pandemic, I experimented with some virtual sex and found some enjoyment. I tried it again recently with the same person and it felt like it went past growing edge into re-traumatization. Sad because I do want to connect. It feels related to uncertainty in my life and feeling very vulnerable. Any hints about how to dance with this? Yeah, this is a really great question. And, it, and I think it's like, can be true in virtual sex and also in in-person sex, right? Um, one thing is permission, obviously, to always change your mind, right? And, and it what I've noticed is that our ability to judge, um, like arousal messes with our ability to judge a little bit, right? Or to, to make judgments about our ourself and our capacity, right? So like when we're aroused, sometimes we might do things that go beyond um, what we feel comfortable with when we're not aroused. And so what I found really helpful for that is to decide before arousal what I'm up for and to know what my hard boundaries are. And to even like, if I get up to one of those hard boundaries and be like, oh, it's fine. I'm, I'm super turned on. It's going to be great to be like, no, Pavani, remember this was my boundary with myself. I'm not, I'm not going to do this. And um, so that's one thing is, is kind of the pre-planning, the um, and, and negotiating with a partner about it and, and talking about like, where the, where are the hard lines for both of you before you get into the situation? I think that's just good consensual sex practice. And I think the other piece here is um, what to do with the going past into the re-traumatization re and getting support around that, right? And um, like, sometimes we all go past our boundaries. We don't necessarily, we think it's one place and turns out to be somewhere else or, you know, it just, it happens. And to, to be gentle with ourselves when that happens, right? It's like, just because it was okay, then it wasn't okay this time. And it felt bad afterwards. Okay. And so now what, how do you not shame yourself, get support? I mean, I'm glad you're talking about it. Right. And not let it also um, inform what's next, right? It's like that beautiful thing of showing up to sex without expectation, right? Showing up to sex with what is right now, what is present in my in my body. And the that thing that um, that someone mentioned, right? What I thought my head wanted wasn't what my body wanted, right? They're they're often available for different things. And so, you know, doing body check-ins and asking, like, hey, body you know, how are you? <laughs> My head thinks like, we just want to fuck her right now. Like, wh what are you thinking? Like, what are you available for? You know, and, and having that internal negotiation. Um, yeah. And just being tender here because it's, it's tender stuff. And, and I'm sorry that it went past where you felt comfortable. And um, I think in those situations, how I handle that is to just acknowledge the impact, like we talked about, um, to acknowledge the the vulnerability that it takes to show up, to forgive myself, uh, to talk about it with the other person if needed. Um, and yeah, and just to to be gentle. I hope that's that's helpful. Right. Well, the crew who came for this webinar, I just appreciate you so much and I'm sending so much tenderness um, 
for your for your blocks and for your flow and just encouraging you to hold that tidal metaphor of it comes in it goes out it comes in it goes out like just how it is right and to trust to trust that the erotic really does call us home right you wouldn't be here if it wasn't calling you home right now so thank you for your time and your attention today and um, i hope to see you uh, at a future webinar and until next time i am dr pavani moray for wilsilium thanks everybody <laughs>